at the helm of the Cessa C42. Now what we're doing, we're just getting the line set, we're getting some of the fenders in, and we've got the drone now, as you can see, over the top of the Cessa C42. And we're just getting everything ready to leave the dock to go on a sea trial and do a drone video of this boat. Uh, Nick is doing our lines at the moment and Andrew is flying the drone and I'm here at the helm. And we're gonna show you from a bird's eye view exactly how this handles on the Volvo IPS system. So we've got the IPS controls to my right and we've got the normal controls just here. If we operate the normal controls, the engines will go in and out again in a normal way and steer in a normal way. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna use the joystick controls, which we activate by pressing the docking button. And now we should be able to enable the boat to maneuver using the joystick only. And this is what we're gonna do whilst using the drone. So Nick is just taking off the last couple of lines now and he will let me know when all lines are on and what I'm going to do now is literally we're going to just maneuver our way off the dock by simply using the joystick and I can doing a very light right hand twist just to take us off and keep us in a straight line and then if we need to come back across I can just turn slightly to to the left as you can see we're getting quite close to the to the yacht next to us. It's quite a tight berth, but just doing very small maneuvers just with my thumb, you can see we're actually leaving the berth in a lovely controlled straight line. And when we're clear of the yacht, we can simply start to bring the nose around by twisting. The control lever to the left, so anti-clockwise and just twisting it ever so slightly and then returning it back to the middle and if I hold it you can see that we're doing a very nice controlled port side turn and then as we start facing the correct way to go out I'll just put the lever slightly forward and now we can use the gear stick control to go forwards. Now, although the gear stick control is very, very good, as you can see, for maneuvering out of a berth and into a berth, once you start going in a straight line, it's actually quite nice to go back onto steering and normal controls. It's very easy to do, you can leave the gear stick and as soon as you put it into gear, which I'm gonna do, so port engine first, then starboard, and now both engines are in gear and we can steer as normal. And you can see as we're leaving the pontoon, we're now entering into the River Hamble where we're gonna head out. Just making sure there is good, clear way, which there is. And that whole process was very easy and very straightforward. The, um, the lever control on here, um, it's in a nice position. I quite like the way that it's separated from the main controls with a distance. Quite often I'll see the joystick control quite near the helm controls. Um, I quite like it being a distance away because you've got that complete separation where there's no risk of knocking the main controls into gear. If you do knock the main controls into gear, they do take over that straight away, as I've just demonstrated. Um, so, because it's completely separate, there's no risk of that. So it is in a nice position. Although I would like to see it slightly more to the left, because um, it's a little bit of a reach. So you have to find your right over on the right-hand side of the seat, trying to get a good position on it. But once the main controls take over, then you can head back to the center and use them as normal. It's a beautiful day here on the River Hamble, but we're in December um, and it's absolutely freezing outside. But I'm in a t-shirt, well, not a t-shirt, I'm in a shirt. So I'm in a nice um, shirt, we've got the heating on, it's nice and warm in here. And this is one of the benefits of a hard top boat, which you can completely shut the doors behind. So this Cessna C42 actually um, is very much a similar layout you'd have to a Flybridge 42 foot. 
um, just without the flybridge. Instead, it has a lovely hard top roof um, that you can slide open and shut. And really in colder days, um, over the winter periods, as you can see, the sea state is beautiful. It's a really calm day and the sun is out and um, we can use this boat like we use on a sunny day, although there was frost on the decks when we got here. But as we proceed outside the, out the River Hamble, we're just passing the slipway of Hamble Point Marina um, on my starboard side. And then we've got Wars Ash on our port side and we're just heading out the river. It's quite high tide at the moment. In fact, I think we're on high tide. But there's not much tidal movement. And we're gonna head out and then we'll show you how this boat handles out at speed. Um, driving from the helm though, I have pretty good visibility. Um, outside the windscreen is very clear. Um, the sun, although um, it's quite low this time of year and there is um, sunlight shining off of the sea. Um, I've been on a few boats this last week and my visibility, I could barely see anything because the sun was in my eyes. Actually, there is quite a, um, a blockage of um, sky from the top of the windscreen. So my visibility is very good out of the windscreen, but there's about two foot of where the, the, actually the sun is shielded. So it does act like a sun shield which is actually brilliant today because I don't have the sun in my eyes. Um, visibility to my port and starboard set at the helm, um, I do find I have to duck a little bit to see the horizon. So this top here and the same on the port side. I would like to have seen this a little higher with a bit more visibility, but actually, you know, it's simple to just peer down, but you just do find yourself keep having to have a little peer down. Um, just to make sure there's nothing coming up port to starboard. Um, but we do also have, if you want to, I don't really want to today, but we can drop this window down and we can actually stick a head out and we can see clearly down the decks um, and obviously for ventilation as well, it's very good. And we can shout out our crewmates from here as well. Um, the hard top roof is electrical and it does slide all the way back. Um, which enables you actually um, to be in a position where you can stand. There is a platform under my feet which I can drop down and it will, I can stand then and poke my head out of the roof as well. So if I did want that extra bit of visibility, I can stick my head out of the roof. Um, but actually looking behind me, um, with the side windows actually continue all the way along to the back of the boat. Um, there is a pillar in the middle um, and it's got the French doors um, at the back and actually, well, there's sliding doors at the back. Um, and then, but my visibility rear is very good. Um, I can actually see the horizon just by um, looking at the back. I don't know what that'll be like when we're going along. We'll have another look then, because quite often on flybridge boats, it's your rear visibility um, when you're going along that is, um, that is quite difficult. So sometimes having a rear facing camera in, on the boat is actually quite a good idea. Um, but we're just heading out now. The other thing I'd say as well, the, the instrumentation is laid out. It looks um, quite well laid out. I've got obviously the engine start and stop controls here. I've got the Volvo Penta LCD displays for port and starboard in front of me and I can scroll through to have like rudder angle, um, engine hours, engine RPM, coolant temp, turbo pressure, engine oil pressure. I can have everything that the instruments will show you on here as well, as well as a couple of other things like turbo pressure as well, and a few other bits. Um, we do also have the normal analog gauges all the way along the top of the dash panel. Um, I can see them, although they're not in my face, they're slightly angled upwards. Um, I would like to see them at a slightly more of an angle to my face, but they're slightly angled. I can read them all okay, um, but I just feel that they're not quite angled into my face as I'd, as I'd like. Um, and then we've got Carson switches all the way along to control um, things like wipers and lights and such like anything that you need up at the helm. Um, this has the IPS drives, like we said, the Volvo Penta IPS system. Um, in addition though, this has a bow thruster. So a bow thruster has been added um, and that will give you additional bow movement if, if required. And, um, and also if any, 
albeit anything happens with one of the engines, it'll give you that additional maneuvering that you'd need if you're just trying to maneuver on one engine. Of course, the IPS system becomes a bit redundant um, when you're only on one engine. So all in all, it's quite a good layout. The steering wheel as well, you can um, tilt up and down, just like this, so you can get it in a, just a nice position. And the helm seat, um, I can stand, although if I stand now, I can't see anything. Um, there's also a bolster that comes up. Um, and again, I'd only be standing really if I was gonna be looking out the top of um, the windscreen. Um, other than that, I'll, a seating position, and there's a good footrest under my feet as well, um, is what I choose. So we're just reaching the end of the River Hamble now. Um, as you can see, the boat's looking great. Um, as we come out the end, we're gonna um, probably head up um, towards Hill Head, I think. Yeah, we're gonna head up towards Hill Head and um, we'll start to speed up once we clear the river. Um, two big wipers on here with wash as well. Um, so if there is anything, that any spray or anything gets on the screen or it starts raining, um, they are big and they do look like they clear this screen very well. So if Andrew's happy, yeah, happy. thank you. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to start speeding up. And this also has Bennett trim tabs as well. Um, and they are all the way up at the moment. Let's start building up some speed. I'm just having a look around to make sure there's no boats around as we're doing that. And we're gonna head for a marker buoy called Bald Head, which is a green marker. So we're 2,000 revs. We're now building up to 2,500 revs where we should be Open up on the plane. So two and a half thousand revs, we're doing about 18 knots. We're now planing very easy up onto the plane. So 19 knots at two and a half thousand revs. So I'm just checking temperatures, oil pressures, as you should every time you speed up, just to make sure that everything is okay. The Great Marine Chart Plot is quite nice. It's right in the middle of the dash. Uh, very easy to see. It's a hybrid touch system. So I'm just speeding up. So now doing 3,000 revs. 25 knots we're doing now. So a very nice turn of speed. And again, very easy, very nice transition of power. There's a yacht just ahead of us to our port side. So I'm just maneuvering around that. And there's a ship coming in on my starboard, which I'm hoping will should make a port turn and stay in the shipping channel. So I'm just going between the two. Very quiet, can barely hear any engine noise. We can talk, can't we, Nick? Yeah, yeah, Nick can hear me at the back. It's very nice, actually. It's a nice position. And as the nose has come up, my visibility to port and starboard, my starboard visibility has actually improved now we've come up because this brow of the window's raised. So I've got very good visibility to my starboard side. Just operating the trim tabs. These work very well.
and as I was saying the rear visibility I do have to lean down to actually see the horizon which is what I'd find myself doing if I'm going to make a turn or anything like that I just want to see if anything's catching me up but I could spend a lot of time here at the helm um, but I don't have to steer all the time because this has autopilot as well so it's got a Raymarine autopilot system so as I press auto I can leave the helm alone now um, it can be controlled off the Raymarine hybrid touch screen or of course also off the unit itself where I've operated it on I mean you get a choice with the um, autopilot head either you can have buttons to change your um, direction or this one's got a toggle which I prefer actually so if I do want to turn to starboard I can just change it very easily I can do a 15 degree turn to starboard quite a few lobster pots around so I'm keeping a good eye out for lobster pots at the moment and I'll show you again I can do a 20 degree turn to port again responds very well it's very quick to change direction but not too quick it's just a nice you want it to react it does How are we doing drone wise? We're getting some good. We're just getting the drone on the bow now. So can you just keep going in a dead straight line? I'm gonna carry on in a dead straight line. I've hop got the autopilot on. I'm hovering the drone about probably about three metres off the bow right now. Yeah, I'm looking at it, it looks like I can almost touch the drone. This does a really, really nice shot, as you can see the bass rare people can get this shot you've got to be pretty skilled drone pilot for this wouldn't recommend it. it's the first thing you do if you buy yourself a drone <laughs> but the boat actually rides beautifully now Cessa have developed the hull over the years and um, they actually can get a lot more speed out of their hulls than a lot of other manufacturers for the for the size of the engines and uh, I'm impressed this is just cruising at 25 knots at 3,000 revs. I'd like to see what it can do, but we'll do that once we turn around, we'll do that. But I can also show you um, a couple of nice turns in a minute. Which way do you want me to turn? Um, you turn to port. Okay, I'll do a good sharp turn to port, and then I'm just having a good look around again. So there's nothing on our port side. to boil it off it handles really nice you do lose visibility on the port side looking to port so it's something to be aware of you have a good look beforehand but we're doing a good turn it does feel does feel like a sports boat even though it's a 42 foot boat with a flybridge sort of layout the IPS drives the hull actually I can turn it with one finger it's just really nice really responsive yeah really good okay hang on just go slight to port or is I hit for the and straight line, we'll just head in a straight line now. Okay, so you're just getting a beautiful shot now of the overhead. Still need to find out how fast this thing can go. So as soon as Andrew gives me the nod, I'm gonna I'm gonna gun it. <laughs> so let's see what we can do. So it hasn't been cleaned off all summer, so it's got the, the whole summer growth on the River Handball, which can be quite a lot. It can be quite a, 
Um, quite effect actually, we're just going through quite a bit of wash at the moment. There we go, very good, that's quite soft. Um, and it does reduce boat speed quite a lot, the River Hamble. Um, I've experienced, we took another 42 foot boat out and it lost about 10 knots of speed, believe it or not, from what it would normally do. Um, this boat, I would guess, probably is a 32, 33 knot boat, um, but we're still getting 29 knots. And that is a testament to the IPS system, um, the forward facing drives. The IPS drives don't seem to suffer as bad with um, contamination as, say, stern drives. And also the hull as well. The hull seems to be still performing very well. So we're still getting a good 29 knots, even though we're at the end of the season where the growth uh, the barnacles, the weed are at its worst under the boat. Um, so I can definitely see that we're probably a couple of hundred revs down on each engine. That'll be down to the growth. Um, but with that couple of hundred revs and a clean bottom, we're, I think we're getting another three, maybe four knots out of it. So uh, yeah, again, fantastic. Um, all the gauges are good, all the temperatures are good. And you know, it feels like I could do this speed all day long, but I'm not going to go and pass another lobster pot. Um, we're not going to because I don't want to use the owner's fuel up too much because believe it or not. Probably go with the battery changes. Yep. Okay. okay. Right, we're going to slow down now because we're going to get the drone in and change the battery. So I'll just bring it down. Something we have to do quite often when we do a longer drone shoot. require the boat to come to a complete stop. You never want to slow down too quickly. There we go. Right, so we're just coming back into the River Hamble now. And um, we discovered that there is actually a rear view camera on here and it works really well so it's so it's positioned at the moment um, for docking actually funny enough so it's looking directly down onto the bathing platform um, but of course when you're going along you can use it as well there is a range of view which I think I adjust slightly so it can be useful going along as well as docking um, so we can use the camera when we're docking so as we're coming back into the river handball just make sure there's no one else coming in. We are just relaunching the drone. So we can get a good bird's eye view again of us docking the boat. So at the moment I'm still using the controls, just in and out of gear, just to keep us in a good position. Really interesting to see how the boat performs docking. We've got a slight crosswind as well, so we're getting we'll be getting blown away from the pontoon, and we are quite in quite a close proximity to the yacht next to us. So we're just going to head into where we need to be first of all. Remember what berth it is. Always forget that one. Heading to Hamble Sea Pontoon, Hamble Point Marina. 
the tide I say is ebbing ever so slightly. We're still at high tide, I believe, but it may just be starting to go. So we're going to turn. So I'll probably keep quite high sided going into here just because if the tide is ebbing we're going to get pushed to our port side to the boats on the port side so I'm going to start turning in just make sure the way is clear which it is and there we go I'll just go into the centre of the run into neutral and now I think I'll press the docking button on the joystick and now we'll head in and you need to sort of make a judgment when you're coming into dock on the wind and the tide and how you're going to do it but I think I'm going to head in and then I'm going to start to bring the bow round just as I'm level with the berth. I'm just doing a couple of slight movements forward and I'm going to start bringing the bow round now. A bit of reverse, bow round. I think I'm going to go a bit sideways bow round and just let it settle and then a bit of reverse you can see the pontoon quite clearly a bit more unaware of the yacht next to me, so I'm going to keep as close as I can to the pontoon. I can't really see the yacht next to me, but I know because I came off this berth that I fit in it. So as long as I keep close to to the berth, then we'll be fine. And the operation is very easy. It does the boat does feel like everything that I'm doing is allowing me to do. I can see the yacht next to me now, so now I've got a good half a metre. So, and I'm just keeping nice and close to the pontoon. Camera as well, as I'm looking at it. So I'm just doing a slight starboard twist, just to keep us nice and level coming in. Interestingly, there's a window in the galley and I can see the pontoon through it. It's very interesting. I can actually see my distance from it. Obviously, I can see the yacht next to me now and from the camera and from Nick's waving at me, I can see we're getting quite close to the pontoon behind. I can see it quite well and I can just bring the boat to a stop. Just like that. And I can actually hold it on the pontoon for Nick as well, you know he's running down the pontoon, he doesn't need to. To tie the line on. And just as and I can just keep the boat on the pontoon by just now and again doing a quick sideways to port and then Nick will Get his lines on and then when he's happy I think he'll give me a thumbs up. So I've not had to do any real communication with Nick, he knows he needs to get the lines on, I can keep a good eye on him because of the visibility of the boat and in fact the whole process very easy indeed. I know it's a nice calm day but we did have a bit of crosswind um, but of course any time parking a boat can be nerve-wracking, but certainly using the joystick control certainly makes life a lot easier. So I'm really pleased with that. 
Excellent. Right. Okay. So I think um, I think I'm going to shut the engines down now and get the electric back on.